guys? And finally, welcome back to the Chop Shop. I know I technically just dropped an episode the other day or whatever last week. Kind of lost track of point. Lost track of point? Lost track of time? <coughs> Already stumbling over my words, but it is what it is. So, long story short, in the muffler delete video of the Harley, I told you about my new truck that I was putting to work. That's exactly what I did. So I was gone for an entire week and I was also gone for a couple days on a previous week. I've legit just not been home. But I started recording another video of the F1 Hundo. There was a front end, I thought it was a front end noise and I was just double checking, triple checking, quadruple checking, 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 everything on the front end. I couldn't find anything and everything on the front end is new anyways so i was racking my mind trying to figure out what the hell is going on turns out uh, i think it's actually a rear end noise that just kind of sounds like a front end noise first and foremost i think with the mini spool in the truck and just constant relentless clutch dumps and drifting around corners i think maybe the rear end might be getting a little slap in it but i can get in here and my flippy floppies and not eat shit. I don't know if you can see this. If I rock the truck back and forth, I don't think you can get a very good view of it. My axle is moving. It appears as though I broke the Harbor Freight welds on my axle purchase. Uh, kind of not surprised. I do have a better welder now. So I suppose what we're gonna need to do is hopefully jack this thing up in the air, get the rear tires off, and hopefully weld those more gooder without having to drop the axle because that would really make me mad. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna try and knock that out because hopefully later this week I'm gonna head back out and this pig, Needs a little bit of love already. It's technically under warranty, but they're like three weeks out on work. Oh, it's back here. Just a little bit of steering linkage. Nothing crazy. Uh, I think it's gonna take me like probably an hour to do. Like I said, they're like three weeks out on service. And if I don't use that thing for work for three weeks, I'm gonna lose stupid amounts of money. So I just swallowed my pride, I'm gonna do it myself. Um, but yeah, let's get that rear end up in the air. See if I can weld those brackets real quick. Also, this thing randomly has gotten hot on me twice. Like, super randomly. Like, I drove it an hour to grid life. And it started getting hot on the way there. Put some water wetter in it. Uh, I did have a loose coolant line, so it probably wasn't building pressure. Made the hour-long drive home just fine. And then decided to drive it down to Plymouth, which is an hour, another hour trip. Did that just fine, but then on the way back, randomly started getting hot and then dropped back down. Um, I'm curious of if maybe my thermostat isn't sticking. I don't know. I do have a new thermostat, gasket, and some sealant and whatnot. Uh, while I do that, I'm probably gonna fire it up, let it run, and just stick the hose in there. Try and flush out the block, see if there's any crud in the radiator, because if you remember, this is a marine engine uh, that obviously gets cooled with lake water. So it's kind of rusty and corroded. Uh, let's see, let's see uh, just what happens. So I'm gonna stop rambling and start working, huh, Midas? When did you have that rear end jacked up yet? You're, you're not much help. Boom, got it up in the air. This side, actually it looks good. You are hot, buddy, why don't you go inside? But, over on this side, if I can get you up in here. It's plain as day, if I can get it off. Yep, not only are those booger welded, they are clearly broken, so. Uh, Midas, hush please. Get you no, you can't see them. Anyway, they're broke. So let's 
I don't know how I'm going to attack this because I don't want to take this axle out. <clears throat> Did my U-bolt loosen up too? It just looked that way. It just looks that way. It looks like it's good. Or maybe not. Might have to tighten up this whole side a little bit. Oh yeah, it just wiggled. This is totally a uh, my fault. I banged this together in a backyard and then just started abusing it thing. For sure, yup. That's all my fault. So, I'm gonna see if maybe it might be a little bit easier to try and get some welds on the inside here. Tighten up these brackets and um, probably go abuse this thing some more, I'm being honest. Dang guys, I really, I can't get anything in here to try and clean this up, so, yo, I'm just gonna crank it up and send it, and uh, you know, with this welder, like anything that I did was gonna be better than what I previously did, and uh, let's just see what happens. Let's see what I can make happen here. I really don't want to blow this rear end apart. Well, I'm probably gonna tear this thing back apart this winter. I just need, I just need to continue with using it until snow flies. Great. There we go. There we go. Push the button and switch it over to spool. Get you guys in here. So, look at that guy. I couldn't get in there very deep, but you know, my wife is used to that. Same thing over here, a little more gooder underneath. I can't get you in there, can I? I can't get you in for that view. That's less shitty welds over super shitty welds. So I'm gonna attack probably the inside here, inside right here, on the front as well. Get a little bit of something, something on the inside here, tighten these U-bolts down, and probably go whole shot this thing and see if that, that thud goes away. I can't tell yet, but I think I'm gonna have to try and attack those from in here, where I have even less room. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't even have a bed floor and I can't get this done. Gonna come in from the bottom maybe? Oh yeah, I can see that. I can see. Can I get my welder in here though? I still see. Ow. Kinda.
in the front there. And uh, I'll put these tires on and go bat bat. Damn it, you just get it. Get it. Might help if I, uh, you know, jack this up so that it's sitting at right height. <laughs> so, I think we can call that fixed. No clunk, went around the block, then a nice little rolling burnout. No clunk, no nothing. So the whole time I was adjusting and trying to realign and freaking out about my front end, the entire time it was the rear end. So that's fixed. Um, Man, I don't know if I'm gonna get in this tonight, but man, especially now that it's hot, so we're probably for sure not going to do this thermostat tonight. It might be a tomorrow thing. But stay tuned, guys. I know swapping out a thermostat isn't anything cool or whatever. But uh, I'm thinking there's probably some crud in this radiator. Or maybe still floating around in the block. Because it was quite cruddy. Quite cruddy. Quite cruddy, my buddy. Cruddy. Um, yeah. So we're gonna rinse this thing out, give it a good old flush radiator in block. Drop the thermostat. I think it's got a 180 in it now. It could be a 190. I think it's a 180. I am not sure, but uh, yep. I uh, maybe maybe I'll have a beer or two, put a fan on this, and maybe I will drain that coolant and stuff tonight. I don't know. Like I said, I've been gone for like a week, basically a week and a half which means I've been driving that thing and living in it and I've not gotten to enjoy Sandy at all. And I have every intention on cutting this thing back apart this winter, so I'm kind of trying to enjoy it. I don't know, I don't know, stay tuned. Side note real quick, 
I'm sure you guys probably keep seeing this thing in the background. And if you didn't catch the video, you're probably like, what the fuck, bro? How come we're not talking about this? Uh, this is my buddy, Anibals. Anibals. I should probably know which way to say his name. I, I've known this dude for years. I normally just call him Neebs. Uh, despite the fact that I probably pronounced his name wrong, we're actually pretty close. So it'd be kind of just one of those scenarios where we worked together and quickly became family. Uh, long story short, he needed a place to store this thing for a little bit. And if you caught the previous video, we pulled out the old locked up 350 that somebody had swapped into this at some point in time. And we're currently doing an LS swap. Um, while it's here, let me see if I can get you in here with the flashlight real quick. Okay, so somebody poorly welded these small block mounts in here. And I mean, which is fine, the previous engine fit in here. But I don't know if you can really tell, this engine is sitting this way and this way. So it's not plumb level or square. Also, they did like legit like probably a foot long extension on the transmission and it's bending down. So while it's here, I'm going to get this out, pressure wash it, clean everything up real nice, cut those motor mounts out, and likely just re-weld some in plumb level square. Um, I've seen some other guys really, really go ham on it. I don't know quite how I'm going to attack it yet because this whole frame has been braced for hydraulics. As you can see, she's on juice, but um, some guys, I know, cut out a little section here and we'll use a piece of metal and thread um, some bolts through here. Uh, I don't want to cut out all this bracing because it's super thick. So we may or may not end up just re-welding some motor mounts in there. I know the reason the other guys do it is so they're removable, but like with the motor mounts, they're just one bolt on each side and it does come out. So, I mean, I guess if you want to later in life swap something out, you're cutting motor mounts again, but I imagine he's probably going to stay LS. So just welding in a set of motor mounts is going to be just fine. So stay tuned. You're definitely going to see this thing on here probably for a couple episodes. So check it. Odie doty. So here's the next day. Sounds like I'm gonna have a late day being called into I don't know. My it's work, but it's not really my full time anymore, but it kinda is, kinda whatever. Sounds like I'm gonna have a late day in, which means a late day out. So why waste the day? Let's get this this coolant drained. Gonna try and save and reuse what I can. It's draining kind of slow, which kind of makes me wonder if this thing doesn't have some cuts in it. Let me get this just full on, take this valve out, see if it drains fast. Not really. Not really. What if we take the cap off? Oh, that's more good. Oh, that's too much. <laughs> Maybe we'll put the valve back in and then take the cap off. <laughs> well, that was a stream. Right, now take the cap off. And open the drain. Alright, so we'll just let that do its thing. Suppose while that's draining, I'll try to stay motivated here, making progress. Go ahead and get these hoses off since we gotta get to this thermostat. Trying to not make a mess here like I normally do, but kinda just is what it is. Quick tip, after you remove your hoses, re-tighten your clamps so they don't fall off. So when you go to reassemble this stuff, you're not trying to find them. You know, the best part about doing this thermostat job is the bolt on the thermostat that's behind the water pump is super pain in the ass to get to. So you have no choice but to uh, just use an old school open end wrench and then fly it the rest of the way out with your fingers. A wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Boop, 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 boop. She's finger spinning. She's finger loose. There it goes. Ooh, 
Whoop. Let's see. I don't see any crud stuck in there or nothing. You're stuck in there pretty good though, huh? I'm pretty sure this is a 180. And it's still pretty warm. By no means is it at 180 degrees, but I kind of half expected it to still kind of be open. But whatever. Let's flush this thing out. Swap out this guy. Now, not that making it actuate with my fingers is a... Oop. I knocked my camera over. Not that making it actuate with my fingers is a... Oh, it kind of stuck there, though, huh? Maybe that is a good test. I was just getting ready to say, making this thing open and close with my fingers isn't a good test because it's heat that opens it. But then it was totally stuck. Look, it's stuck again. Oh, I wonder if that was our culprit. It's stuck again. It's totally sticking. Look at that. It must have some sort of rough edge or something on it. Huh. Huh. So what about this one? This is the new 160. Is that going to do the same thing made in Israel? Great. Is it going to be sticky? No, that moves way better. I'm not binding up at all. That must have been our freaking issue. We might not need to flush this thing out. I might do it anyways. I might not. I probably won't. Also, I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. I'm going to knock my camera over again. Can we zoom? So, yep, that was right. It is a 180. And this guy, 160. So, let's clean this up. Slap this bad boy in there. And I didn't have any overheating issues or anything until I made that long drive. So I almost wonder if this thing was starting to cool down to the point where maybe this was trying to close and then sticking. I'm probably not gonna flush this thing out because it seems to be draining just fine. If there was crud in it, I would assume that the radiator wouldn't have wanted to drain as smoothly as it is. I don't see any, I don't see any crud down there, so. I don't think I'm going to waste my time and all the effort doing that. Clean this bugger up and I'm probably going to repaint this thing because it's pretty grody. Good nerf. All right, so we got a flange service. Uh, I might need to put a little bit more effort into that. Let me clean that up just a little bit more. I thought I did that more gooder than I did. But uh, over here we got the housing. So I just wire wheeled it and got some primer on it. We're gonna shoot it with the closest uh, off the shelf blue that I can find. It might just sandy. The whole engine is done in that. I don't know if you guys know this or not. You don't necessarily have to run like a high temp paint on your engine. Uh, I get asked about this all the time. This is actually uh, Rust-Oleum Harbor Blue that you can buy pretty much anywhere. What I did is besides cleaning the block real well, um, I did do the high temp primer and then the Harbor Blue and then high temp clear. And you may be saying this is yellowed a little bit. This is actually from like multiple oil leaks and coolant links and anything like that. I mean, if you look at the the water pump, the valve covers, even the side of the block and everything like that, it, it's lasted up, man. And I am hard on this and it takes road trips. So, I mean, if you think your color options are limited as far as what you can paint your engine, not so much. Just use the high temp primer, your middle coat there of whatever color you choose, and then a high temp clear coat. It lasts, you're good to go. All right. We got one coat of our blue on here already. I'll do one more. I don't even know if I'm going to bother to hit it with a clear or not. Probably not. Get overspray all over Sandy. Maybe close the door so it's not so windy. I 
and that's gonna be good enough. We will probably go ahead and let this dry for the day. I should be getting my call to go to work some point in time soon. Run in, hang out with the wife, and uh, tomorrow we'll come out here, bang this back together. Also tomorrow, that thing needs a fuel filter and that steering link, like I said, so. I got a call to go back on the road, which I unfortunately had to turn down because I need to work on that. And I told my other job that I'd come in today. Otherwise, I'd be on my way to Louisiana. But uh, I'm hoping to be heading back out like Wednesday, Thursday. I want to grind real hard so we can do a round two this winter on Sandy. And also really start going ham here on the Lightning. But I'm hoping uh, about the time that snow starts flying, I have boxes of parts sitting everywhere so I can entertain myself while it's cold. But yeah, so I gotta work on this a little bit. Tomorrow I'll work on that, enjoy a day with the wife, and hopefully get back out and fucking start making that cheddar. Alright, this next day, paint should very much be dry. And I did clean the gasket surface way more gooder. Mm. But uh, I have a very busy day. I need to finish this. Go to the gym. Go to the parts store. Get a fuel filter for the black Cummins. Work on the front end. Change the fuel filter. So basically service the black truck. Service the white truck. Finish this truck. Go to the gym. Take the wife to dinner. No and then. No and then. No and then. No. No and then. And uh, I will not pulling my hair out. So... Let's get this wrapped up. So, nothing crazy. Just, I don't think it's anything that I've ever encountered before. This actually had a backer on it, so it's sticky. So I don't have to silicone the back of this to get it to stick in place. I can just carefully position this. Probably still silicone this side. That's going to hold the thermostat in place for me. How nice is that? I like it, I like it. Pah, ninja! Oh, I didn't even get all the way through. I'm not a good ninja. Still not. There we go. Ninja! This brand new tube of Permatex was like halfway empty before I even started, so that's pretty cool, but I'm just gonna do a thin layer around here. Stick that bad boy on, and then fight these two bolts back in. I'm not gonna drag you along with me for it because it's two bolts my dog can do that boom got it all installed again yeah, nothing crazy but I am super annoyed because I think YouTube actually may have taken the video down because I used a clip or something but when I originally got the truck no I think the video is still up um, my belt cut through my radiator hose and just completely covered this engine with coolant which is why it's all stained yellow but now I have repainted my thermostat housing, and I have a nice, pretty thermostat housing bolted to a stained intake manifold, and it's kind of driving me bananas. But uh, I'm not going to do nothing about it. We're just going to slap it back together. I'd like to say that I'm going to put new coolant on it, but I'm not. Um, that's going to go right back in there. And uh, we're going to drive this thing to the gym. Okay, so the dirty dog is a clue of the weather. I know I said I was gonna take this thing and drive it to the gym, but it is raining. Not that she's any sort of trailer queen or anything, but I do have my bike in, this, in the bed with the, the fabric seat and everything. And I just don't feel like taking that out there. I don't wanna ruin my seat. 
so we're probably not gonna drive it. I lied. I'm driving the F100. I don't know why. I acted like I'm not about to drive the F100.
appreciate you guys. Much love. I'm out of here.